plugs here someplace. Uh, oh, there's the box. That might be handy. Meat and potatoes. Mm, not really. Some surface stuff. Ooh, meat. I think. Okay. Tip video. I'm hoping that I'll see some bugs today, get a little bit of surface activity. Kind of doubtful, but you know, wishful thinking. So I'm going to set a rod up, um, how I set a rod up for dry fly fishing. I'm going to show you how I do that and go over how I set a leader up, how I set a tip it up. And then I'm going to take it on the water and show you a couple little presentation tricks that I do when I'm dry fly fishing. So we may have to do a little bit of pretending that a fish is rising. But anyways, I want to go through how I set up a rod to do some and some of my presentation. Um, before I head off and hit the water, uh, really quick the rod I'm using today is a nine foot now nah, the company has it designated as a four or five weight it's a real softish a real soft rod more in the butt section nice dry fly line I do have it rigged up with a five weight line however it has a tip midsection definitely more like a four weight so it's really good rod to protect a 6x tippet most of my rods that I use are I fish threes to fives and I usually like to have my fives kind of soft for dry fly fishing because as I mentioned earlier I fish a lot of 6x tippet and I, I want a rod that's tippet friendly for 6x tippet. Uh, fly lines I keep it pretty simple I just use a general um, weight forward floating fly line that the rod would happen to like to cast. Different rods will like different companies rod or fly lines so you want to play around a little bit with fly lines to find a rod that clicks with or excuse me a line that clicks with your rod. So don't go buying rods for to work with a fly line it's cheaper to buy the lines. But anyways that's usually what I use is um, four to five weights I like them to be soft in the tip and my five weights my heavier rods uh, my fours and fives are generally I like a nice fast action rod. I find them to be very um, 6x um, tippet friendly and that's what I use for the rods. Reels, I like click drags, this happens not have a click drag on it. Um, so I just keep the drag turned down so I have a real light drag and I'll just play with the line through my fingers here and I uh, use that for drag because usually we're not getting a too big a fish and if I get into a bigger fish then I'll just old school it, pound them in the reel or whatever. And a lot of my five weights do come with a little bit better drag because sometimes I'll carry them thinking that, all right, I'm going to fish nymphs or I'm going to fish, I might be starting out dry fly fishing, but I might deteriorate the streamer fishing and a five will just turn over streamers. So I put a little bit better drag system on those for bigger fish. But streamer fishing is a whole different subject. And this subject is dry fly fishing. And I like four to five weights with, excuse me, three to five weights with weight forward fly lines, floating fly lines. So I'm getting a rod set up. I'm going to use a bright little colored fly line. Maybe we can see that when I'm casting. On a yellow rod. They don't look like bananas, so we should be okay. But anyways, starting out with generally the size of the flies. I fish a lot of flies between like 14s to 20s. So I fish a lot of small flies. That's just what my streams dictate. So with the smaller flies, quite often I got to be fishing a lot of um, 6x tippet. So generally what I like to do is start out with just a standard 9 foot um, 5x. So the, I'm going to kind of put these leaders on. The whole idea is I want a nice soft delicate um, presentation and okay wonderful. Get this thing untangled. This particular leader did not come with a loop on it no big deal which is actually going to help out a little bit here I'm kind of looking around for a pair of nippers um, yeah a nipper free I'm going to have to go find a pair of clippers so time out <laughs> all right got my nippers 
Now this comes under the heading of know your water. Yes, I usually buy a whole bunch of nine foot liters. And in this case where I'm gonna be is, it'll be relatively open, but I just know that by the time I put this on, add the tippets, my liter's gonna be almost, it's gonna be almost 12 feet. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna nip a little bit of the butt section. A lot of these commercial liters got a very uniform butt section. So it's not gonna hurt if I wanna shorten the liter to take a foot, foot and a half off and just cut it. Throw that in the truck, I'll clean it up later. And yeah, what do we do for loop? I use a perfection loop on my leader ends. There's a lot of knot books and videos and stuff like that and little apps that'll show you how to tie a perfection loop a lot better than I can. But I like the perfection loop because the it's not as bulky as a knot as like a figure eight loop or something like that. So it kind of keeps all that volume down. And then a lot of your fly lines already come with pre-welded loops on them. So it's just a simple loop-to-loop -loop connection. Now I never get too concerned if my leaders have loops on them or not because it's just, it's a good knot to know. Now the biggest thing is, is make sure it goes on like a square knot. So you got a full proper, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. You don't want to, what they call a mule set, you want to, to look like a classic square knot. And what I'm going to do is, yes, this, since this is a 5X, I'm going to come back up and usually end up with the tippet section of your leader. Tippet, if you don't know, is the leader on the leader. And what I'll do here is I'll probably cut about 12 inches off on this end, which is no big deal. I'm going to prune that off. Then I'm going to come back for my 6X. I'm going to add my own 6X on the end of the 5X. The reason for going through all this is that when I cast, I want that leader to turn over really good. I want to go down to that tippet. Then I'm going to hit it a longer, softer tippet so that on the end of the cast, after the leader lays out, I want a controlled collapse of the leader or the tippet section so that when it kind of collapses, the fly just kind of barely turns over. You've got a lot of squiggles on the water. Got a lot, a lot of that softer tippet there that lays on the water, and you can get what I'm looking for is at least a foot now, two foot, two and a half foot of clean drift where I have to do nothing for line handling. I can just drop it out there, the leader turn over, the tippet end will collapse. I'll have a lot of, a lot of squiggle on the water, the fly will land gently, and then I can drift through you know, anywhere from a foot and a half to two, two and a half feet clean drift. So that means I'll just drop that fly like a foot in front of the rising fish, let it drift over them, let it drift a foot or so, swing a little off, and I can pick it up carefully without disturbing the fish. So that's the whole idea. I just, I'm trying to, I want to have a controlled collapse of the fly. So that's why I like with a 5X, I'll shorten it up. Everything's going to turn over really neat with, with um, pretty, now I want to say force, but there's nothing forceful with a 5X and a 16, but turn over very well. So I want to break that, that last little bit of turnaround. I want to break it up so everything kind of has a nice little collapse. And there's a, some soft squiggle on there. That squiggle, that slack, means that your fly will drift clean much longer. You know, I found mending on a drift doesn't work too good with a dry fly. and up spooking fish, sinking the fly. So I'm just looking for a very controlled collapse on the very end of the leader. That's why I'll add my own little tippet on top of the tippet of that. So let me just add some of this on. I'll put on a fly and we'll take it to the um, creek. A um, quick little also rigging tip here. For the knot that I use for my tippet to my leader is a double uni. Um, surgeon's knot works really good. I used to use loop to loops but gone away from that. So I prefer a, a, a double uni. It works good for me. I find it's the strongest of all the connection knots that I've tried. It's easier, faster to tie than a blood knot, just as strong, way stronger than a surgeon's knot. But what's the best knot to use? The one you tie the best. So, but I happen to use a double uni. Of course, I'm tying 6X on a 5X, so it's hard to see on the camera.
All right, the old saying about shake a bush and see what happens. I swear that was a fly fisherman saying. In this case, a little, quick little tip. Uh, if you're not sure what's going on, you haven't been on the water for a while, and you're curious about what's going on with the bugs, give a couple tree limbs a shake. If there's anything been hatching, they'll probably be sitting in those trees up under the leaves. And usually give them a shake and something come out. I didn't see a whole heck of a lot right now. Not surprised. We're just right about on the edge and the light caddis and the and some of the sulfurs will start hatching, but didn't see anything. I'm seeing one, an odd stonefly, an odd caddis dancing around. So I'll take that into um, what I'm going to use for a fly. All right, very typical situation here. Don't see a lot of fish rising, nothing rising. But I've been seeing an odd caddis, so I'm going to go with the caddis. And in this case, I'm just going to do a dry dropper rig. So what I did is, is I just Tie it right off the bend of the hook, put a small little fly on. Uh, don't be afraid to use small bead heads because by the time they break through the surface film, it takes a little bit to pull the fly down. The other thing is, is without a dropper or anything else, my flies never float well. Or all they float decent, but they always need help. So in this case, I'm using some sort of um, flotation. This is a loon product I happen to be using. Why do I use it? Well, because I got a whole bunch of it. But there's a lot of good stuff out there, and this just happens to be a kind of a pasty, creamy stuff. When it sits in your pocket and gets warm, it gets pretty liquidy. So you got to be careful when it comes out. But anyways, I'll liberally dress up the, um, the the fly here. And since I made a mistake and put a little bit of fluorocarbon on the um, leader, I'll just let it run down the lead a little bit. I'll try to avoid my hands touching the dropper. All right, let me just wander out. Let's see what I can pound up. Okay, presentation, voiceover, um, first casting sequence. What you notice is I'm doing a quarter upstream cast. And usually that's the most classic angle for, for dry fly fishing, is quartering up, fishing down to you. And you'll also notice I started out in the rift a little bit and just kind of worked my way in, you know, just to see if there's any fish um, in that are a little bit out, but they might be chasing a few bucks. And then I just kind of work it in. What I don't want to do is cast over the top of some fish that might be feeding near the surface. I'd rather fish narrow than work my way across the run. And by casting upstream, I can get a little bit longer dead drift coming back down. The other thing is, is since I'm using a caddis, I'll let the fly skitter a little bit near the end. Let the drag, let the current catch the line, let the fly skitter a little bit. Because caddises are busy bodies on the water. They're always moving. They don't generally do a classic dead drift like a mayfly will. So caddis is a flutter on the surface, so having a little bit of a skitter is not too bad of an idea or an approach. Kind of a down and across presentation. This is one of my favorite um, approaches when I'm fishing caddis. Is down and across. I also have very good success with fish get a little crabby with the down and across because you can get a lot more dead drift before the fly starts to skitter. As you'll note, when I make the cast quartering down, I'm actually also employing a reach cast into it. So that gives me more slack on the line, more dead drift time, and makes it more efficient to cover the water. And the nice thing about uh, using this technique during a caddis hatch is, is when you dead drift is over, and like I'll say is dead drifting caddis flies are not always the most effective. But when you flies down there and you come to it, you can really hmm, got a caddis going on my speaking of the devil. Um, anyways, 
that I cat is my glasses. When you make that cast that down and you end that dead drift, you, with your rod tip and everything, you can manipulate that swing and have a nice, controlled, slow, natural looking skitter. So your fly's not just being ripped out of there, pulled out of there, you can actually control that, that little dance your fly makes across the surface and make it more, more natural, more lifelike. And very often, especially on the caddis hatch, when those flies skittering on it down on the cross, that's where a lot of your eats will come from. Those, that's when those fish will take it. Third casting sequence commentary. All right, this is probably the most common and probably the most trickiest approach to, um, for a presentation dry fly. That's just basically straight across the currents. When you do that, you got so many different confused or different current speeds. Everything else kind of causes your grab a hold of your fly line and your leader and your fly that things it's hard to get a good dead drift. So what I'm doing there is, and this is especially when I see trout rising, I'll drop that fly literally 12 inches in front of the fish and then let it drop down. Me, that's about 24 inches at the most. Uh, that fish is usually not too far under the surface, so they're kind of coming up or they're looking over a small cone of visibility. So the closer you drop it to the top of that visible cone that they're looking to the surface, the better off you are. The reason is, is when that fly hits the water, something's going to happen to destroy that drift, and it's going to happen fast. So the sh closer you get to where the fish is eating, you drop that fly, the sooner it gets in, you know, that means you get a nice clean drift into the feed zone, into the sight zone, and then let the fly skitter out, put it back out, and just repeat, repeat. Now you notice that I'm nice, even, gentle cast, a little bit of a reach cast, because that helps everything, a little bit of a tuck cast on the end so I might use a combination of reach and tuck cast to make that work and that's probably dudes just understand that's probably what I use mostly on an active rising fish if that's if I happen to be I prefer to be slightly up or slightly below or above the fish till I get a better presentation but sometimes you're just casting across the river to the rising fish keep that in mind when you see that fish rising you, you 12 inches 24 inches you know once again folks this far in front of that fish you don't have to a lot of people make the mistake and they're throwing 12 feet 15 feet above the fish no by the time that fly gets there you're not even in the zip coat very close to that fish almost right on top of that fish immediately let it drift a couple three feet away from it then you can pick it up sometimes a little roll cast helps and then punch it right back out there and just sometimes you just got to get it up there, get it up until that fish is ready. Hey, I want another snack. Oh, look at that. And there you go. All right. Those are the three primary presentations that I use for dry fly fishing. You know, the quarter up, the quarter down, straight across. And that's generally how I tackle it. And it's also how I generally set up the uh, rods to, to go after my dry fly fishing. I keep it pretty simple. A couple basic casts. Um, simple leader thing. Like I said, I want to have that fly just collapse under control. That's why I usually take a leader, add my tippet, and there we go. Um, once again, I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching. As always, if you want another fly fishing tip, put it in the comments. I know I got a couple in the past that people have commented on. Um, trust me, um, if you're one of the people that put a really cool um, I'd like to see comment in, we're working on them. So they're definitely, we're listening, um, we're working on it. And I know I gotta, I'm got i waiting for some bugs to do one with caddis because somebody asked about how I deal with a caddis hatch. Usually pull out what's left of my hair. But anyways, add those to the um, comments um, or look at it. Uh, once again, um, help us out with our trout fishing series. Share that to your buddies. Spread the word about it so you can help us build the channel. The bigger the channel it gets, the more we can do. Uh, so that once again, also hit the subscribe button it's right down in the i think it's right down in this corner here here somewhere near they keep moving it on me hit the subscribe hit the bell icon so the next video comes up we're going to try to put a whole bunch of them up um this summer so that and with some toothy critter stuff so once again thanks for watching hope this was helpful see you on the creeks folks
This is Jay at JPEC Guides in Lost River Fishing. We are a year-round fly fishing catch and release guide service. We fish the Lake Ontario tributaries. And then during the spring and the summer, we also fish the inland trout streams, classic dry fly fishing. During the heat of the summer, we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike. If you're interested in any of our islands or have any questions, please feel free to email us at fish at lostriversfishing.com. Hope to hear from you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.